Welcome to Rich Conversations. This is another special episode. We have Wayne Coffin here, who was on right before COVID in March 2020, episode like 27, I believe. And now we're here for a later episode. We are, this is our first episode actually at Matisse Bar and Grill, mm -hmm. uh, at Diversity and Orchard in the Lakeview neighborhood of Chicago. And uh, I'm excited. We're, we're sipping on some cocktails here. This is our first, we're gonna start doing some podcast episodes here, which is really exciting. We're outside, it's December, and we're outside Yo, and it's nice. in Chicago. It's nice. And, and it's nice, right? They got, they, they got the heaters, it's a nice night, it's, it's great. This is great, great yeah. setting. So great wh setting. Uh, what, what are you drinking? Um, I'm drinking one of their specialty cocktails, the, the Angry Buffalo. Um, I'm loving it, I'm definitely gonna get another one of these. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have the wish you good luck. Nice. Because I noticed, so I love Mezcal, Luxardo, and Green Chartreuse. Yep. And then there's also pineapple in here and lime juice. And uh, you can't go wrong with those ingredients. It's so good. Yep. Cheers. Just, cheers. So why don't you, uh, why don't you reintroduce yourself? Because it's been a <laughs> while since you were on the podcast. <laughs> but we've, we've been in touch uh, a number of times mm -hmm. through COVID. Yeah. So this isn't, this is just like catching up again. Right. You know? Exactly. Yeah. It's cool. Um, keeping, keeping you around, making sure, you know, keeping up with, uh, keeping up with what you're doing, what you're up yeah, to yeah. is fun. So I, I'm, I definitely see you a lot. Um, but introduction, uh, my, my name's Wayne Coffin. Um, a lot of guys or a lot of people know me as my guy. Um, that's like my nickname, uh, stage name. Uh, I do a lot of performative breaking, so I carry a, a, a nickname with me all the time, performative name. So a lot of people know me as my guy, but uh, my name's Wayne Coffin. I'm a co-founder of a Styling Out Network, and um, I've been an entertainer, performer, um, competitor, and uh, entertainment consultant for like 15, 17 years now. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, you got a lot going on. <laughs> I, I try to stay I try to stay busy busy enough to keep to keep me happy about life you know I feel like I've, I've never actually seen you break dance though no the, the next episode we gotta have you like break never? dance I think so is that real no I've seen no I've seen clips of you on your YouTube but uh, never your, live uh, yeah that's we gotta get yeah we gotta get I know. you we gotta get you to come I out. know I gotta get we out we gotta more. get you to come out <laughs> we gotta get you to come out that's surprising yeah uh yeah, so we're here. We're uh, outside in the December weather. Yeah, it's beautiful. We've got some, uh, some nice fire here. Some, what do you call this, like a lamp? Um, is it a heat lamp? Yeah, it's a heat lamp. A heater? It heat lamp. It's, it's one of those heavy-duty, multi-thousand-dollar heat lamps, so it's sick. I love it. Yeah. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good out here. Uh, so you're originally from Chicago, and That's the right. last episode, our first episode together, you talked a lot about... Chicago, growing up in Chicago. Mm -hmm. We're gonna talk about Chicago still. Okay. But uh, it'll be a little, a little different this time. All right, I'm excited. Keeping it, keeping it fresh. So, how would you describe the vibe of Chicago? Overall, or like overall. right now, or let's start with overall. Oh, the vi a vibe of Chicago overall. Hmm. There's so many dope individuals here. It's hard to think of it, the vibe as a collective, but I think. Um, the overall vibe of Chicago is is um what's the word a good word I can use is um I want to say I want to say tenacious tenacious yeah you were you yeah. were uh, searching a while for that word. In I, your I head. was. There was a few. <laughs> there, there was a few. I couldn't choose one. That's that's what it was. But um, I'm gonna say tenacious because there's just like this this don't give up passion passion that's just like on fire in the city right now. Everyone is everyone who's passionate about something is yeah. going for it, you know. And I just feel like. You know, especially in the last two years, you know, every, we all just have like this, you know, there, there is something to live for attitude okay. and everyone's going for it. And I'm, I'm inspired by it. It makes me not want to 
it makes me not want to slack or, or skip a beat, you know? So what, what was your, cause we did this, we recorded, we recorded at Golden Nugget. Oh, I love Golden Nugget. <laughs> to this day we, we were recording golden nugget uh what neighborhood is that that was we were in like old irving at, during that time yeah. i want to say yeah so like this irving was Park this was probably week. like three weeks before covid right this was like right before, before the COVID. shutdown yeah and uh you know so we had this great conversation how did you then i because i've seen you a number of times since then but like how was your pandemic experience in chicago what was it like um it was fortunate um i i worked um i was doing nine to five uh working for a a real estate company called redfin and um when all of that happened we were all working from home which fortunate number one was a very easy transition uh, we were already like hybrid working from home before the pandemic. It was like a perk of the job. Um, so the transition to work from home was seamless. So that was right. fortunate, number one. When the pandemic got deep, a lot of people nationwide got laid off, furloughed, fired. And a, like 40% of our staff did too. And I was not one of those people, which means I had to pick up a lot of work but I was also fortunate, number two, to not lose my job and have income and be able to work from home while quarantining. Um, and then number three is I, you know, I bunkered down and I, I, I worked really hard at, uh, at my company, Styling Out, organizing documents, uh, keeping relationships fresh, pivoting, making sure that we could stay relevant during quarantine, um, training, making sure to keep my skills sharp, Work, uh, working on fitness, giving a place for all of selling out talent to, to be able to practice and keep their sh- uh, skills sharp. Um, so I really just, I bunkered down and I, I grinded the entire 2020. Like no no vacation, no rest. <laughs> just, it sounds similar I, to my, <laughs> my experience. It. I'm still doing it, but I really did it. I was yeah. yeah, full steam ahead, 2020. Elaborate on this roster. You have a lot of talented people on your uh, roster. <laughs> the roster. Um, I, man, I love these guys so much, dude. I really do. Um, Jillian X, uh, Quicktastic, Virgil Seven, and Jacker Size, which is a duo that comprises of uh, Jerome Gilbert and Mike Palmieri. They each have their own individual flavor, and then they meet in some weird, oddly shaped Venn diagram, and they share a few, you know, uh, a few tastes and a few tricks. But um, they really, they, they, they really have a wide variety when you look at them all on the spectrum, um, and they've been grinding just as hard as as I am, if not harder. So those guys are awesome. And then um, we picked up some new guys. A lot of uh, a lot of breakers and a lot of visual yeah. artists and um, and a lot of and a lot of friends and a lot of allies and a lot of lovely folks. So the roster's cool, but the network's the best, you know. <laughs> yeah, Wayne knows a lot of talented people, <laughs> including myself. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that, that, that's, that was e- that was an easy one to to, to point at right there. So what do you what do you notice, or what stands out to you about Chicago right now? Um, there's a weird energy in the air, you know. Like, we, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure it probably feels this way everywhere. But you know, being here at home, I think there's a weird energy in the air. There's this constant feeling of where are we going, what's going to happen next. Okay. And it's a mix of optimism and skepticism and you know everyone is trying to feel what they feel without feeling guilty or you know beat down by it everyone's like it sounds cheesy but everyone more than ever is just simply trying to exist and um it's a it's it's it's, uh it's a crazy time right now you know it's a crazy time right now yeah it really is 
Yeah, it'll be. Uh, it's a very interesting time. So, what what would you say? You said tenacious as far as the vibe of Chicago. Yeah. Do you feel like? It's still tenacious right now, even though the time is, is what it is, and it's you know probably now more than ever. Yeah, it, it's that tenacity that keeps the sanity. It, it, it's a part of the ingredient that keeps the sanity held up. Mm-hmm. You know, like there's a lot of reason to have doubt right now. There's a lot of reason to be stressed out right now. There's a lot of reason to have anxiety right now. But yet you continue to put what matters to you most at the forefront of your goals. And at the forefront of, you know, your day's activity or your, your activities for the day, you know, and in this time where there's more mental weight, more emotional weight on, on an individual now more than ever to be able to still exercise that discipline, exercise that focus, exercise that that tenacity to get by, to get your loved ones through, to get yourself through and to find some crazy excuse to have like a good time through it you know like you know to answer your question you know we're we're more tasteless than ever i would say so what how do you imagine like post pandemic chicago like what comes to your mind what are you imagining like a entire year of how it feels when it's summertime here (laughs) (laughs) a whole year of it for those that don't live in Chicago, Woo, summertime Chicago is fantastic. That's what's gonna happen. The energy in Chicago, We're it's gonna, hard. It's hard to beat anywhere in the country. Like it's hard to beat the energy of summertime Chicago. We're gonna explode and radiate with with joy and that that genuine, authentic Chicago energy when all yeah. of this is over. And it's it's gonna it's gonna roller coaster through the whole year. It does kind of feel like everybody's kind of like sitting on their hands a little bit right now just kind of waiting Mm -hmm. so they're they're, everybody's doing their thing right with that tenacity but it's like when are we able to like like you kind of said like explode and let it all out yeah exactly when can Um, we uh you know relax our shoulders let the like drop the tenseness like right now it doesn't feel safe to put your guard down you know everyone's guard is is up so like, what's the confirmation where we're all like, wow. I'm, so how long do you think it will be? I'm not a psychic. I don't know. I'm not a scientist. It's probably better to, like, not put <laughs> I'm not a put psychic. Dates or times I'm not a scientist. Or... I'm not a data expert. Yeah. You know, I'm a self-proclaimed, like, anthropological enthusiast. <laughs> but I'm not. I'm, I'm no professional with that stuff, dude. Do you think, um, I don't know how long it's going to take. I don't know if I feel it will go back to the way things were. It can. I don't think it ever will be. It can. I don't even remember what it was like. Do you have this weird thing <laughs> where like time? I I can't tell time if time is like what is time? I guess first of all, but like I can't tell if it's been a long time has passed or like a short time. Like, I mean, since I, March 2020, I can't tell if. It feels like five years ago or like five minutes ago. Right. I mean, we're still in it. You know, a lot and yeah. nothing has changed since that time. So, yeah. you know, it's one of those things where like you're standing in the middle of a situation and it's always easier to think what we could have done, should have done in hindsight. Yeah. Looking hindsight. back. Hindsight's easy. Looking back is easy to see what you should have done and we can almost see what we should have done. But at the same time. There's so much ahead of us that it's impossible to foresight what's going to yeah. happen. So we're standing in this middle to where this middle point where hind- hindsight isn't even 2020 yet. Not at all. You know, we're yeah. still in it. Yeah. And the only thing you can do right now is just like stay focused and kind of like sit on your hands, you know. And, but not sit on your hands at the same you know, time. Do do what you have the power to to control and activate and everything else is not in your control now is not the time to like dwell on that or hold on to that you know because we can't we can't do nothing with it it's a great message but also too like 
let's just move on to a different topic because <laughs> nothing ever gets resolved with these like conversations nah. about, hey, what do you think about when will this happen? Or like, right. it's just kind of like, yo, let's just be in the moment. Let's just do what we can. So my question uh, to you, we just talked about summer in Chicago and how awesome it is. But what do you, Wayne, love most about winter? You have lived here your entire life. What do you love most about Chicago winter? That we have one. That we have winter. People don't have it. People see snow for the first time as adults. You yeah. know, people don't know what it means to go through all four seasons. Yeah. I think there's some sort of, like, psychological callus that comes with that. And I find it to be advantageous to our to our psyche a little bit yeah um we get to witness earth in its glory by yeah. experiencing all four seasons you know like based on how perfectly we are placed from the sun in the solar system no other planet has a perfect balance of four seasons yeah. like that and it's really a a, 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 a an amazing you know ex- thing to witness that all the time yeah. You know, it's it it's crazy, you know, Earth is the only planet that does that. Yeah. So and we, we sit right here in the middle of it and we experience all of it. So I think that, that I think that, that does a lot for our, our subconscious dexterity. How do you think it's easier to keep track of time and your life with the seasons? Before time, how did people keep track? Yeah. You know, agriculturers didn't have watches and clocks, and Sumerians made up the concept of 60, but before that, people were growing, living, thriving. Civ- you know, civilizations existed, whether they were on record or not, you know? So that's how people seen time, at least people who had the advantage or, the, or they lived in a region where they could tell time that way. Other people who have more, you know, consistent environments, they've... Uh, who knows how they told time, but you can't use the seasons as as a gauge. Something I'm curious about is like, like how do people in LA live in LA? Like it's the same weather all the time, right? They love and it gets it. hot. It gets super hot, doesn't it? They love it. You know, people move there because that's what they want. People like con- that that consistency, that pattern. Yeah. You know, a lot of people don't want to deal with the cold if you're not you know, physically or mentally, uh, I don't know what to call it, conditioned, then the cold can kind of beat your ass. You know, your bones are I think hurt. what you're getting at is mental toughness, Wayne. I know. I mean, it like in a medical sense, you know, some people literally cannot okay. handle the cold. It hurts their bones. It hurts their muscles. Mm. It, it, it permits them from traveling, from getting around, you know, like. It is. Got, yeah. It, uh, they got to move. It's hard to get around in the winter. It is. You, you got you to gotta wear like. You have to take like ten minutes. Yeah. To like, yeah, <laughs> like God, suit up. Yeah. <laughs> and God forbid you have like an Ill, a yeah. illness or an injury or an ailment of some sort, like it's, it becomes problematic. So I, I get yeah. why people move to LA or, you know, hotter places, warmer places. I don't yeah. like necessarily the, the, the aura of, LA and the connotation behind it, but that's just my opinion. Yeah. You know, I think I've been to LA a few times and I've never had a bad time. Right. It's great in LA, so I, I feel like uh, I've been to LA once. It was a different kind of experience. It wouldn't be like the typical LA experience. If I went to LA, it'd be we'd have a lot of fun. Yeah. But what what's this aura you're talking about? What explain for listeners and viewers what Chicagoans think about LA? I don't want to speak for all Chicagoans. Right, first of all. but what's what's but, the stereotype that Chicagoans have of LA? Um, I feel like a lot of people here in Chicago think that people move to LA because there is a category of fame or or limelight that they may be chasing, or they feel that there's an opportunity in LA that they can get more out of than they think that mm-hmm. they can get here. Yeah. And I say think in the terms, in, in the, with the meaning of assumption that I think it's funny that people move to L.A. for something that they think that they can't achieve here. 
but Chicago has consistently been a place to push out like platinum level stars and yeah. you know first time original artists and you know it's accomplished everything that New York, LA, Paris, all these other like glamorous yeah. you know places have achieved. We've achieved it too, um, but um, I don't want to sound I don't want to come off as like we're better. You know, we all have our perks, you know, our preferences, whatever, but I don't necessarily want to live in L.A. You know, I like it here because I I, I like it here. I think that's something, uh, certainly I'm, I have thought about is when you're reflecting on life, do you focus more on what you have or don't have? And if you focus on what you have, <laughs> you can, if you're living in Chicago and you run down all the things that you have, you got a lot here. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, what, what do you feel that you're missing that you need to go somewhere else or chase something else or thinking your happiness is going to be somewhere else or with someone else? It's like taking the time to reflect on, on what you're grateful for and the assets that you, you're, you do have or you're starting with and go from there. And I've done that calculation for the last, like, I've lived here for like 12, 13 years. I've done that because I've had the idea or this something inside me of like, oh, I should go experience something else right. or explore something else. Right. But then when I actually do take the time I used to be a rideshare driver, and I'd ask people all the time, because I'd interact with people from all over the United States and people from other parts of the world, and so we're having these conversations. So I ask people about places that I've thought about moving to or experiencing, and I think about it even further, and it's just like, when you run down the pros and cons list, or like the assets, or, or what you're thankful for, it's really, really hard to outmatch Chicago. It's tough. It's really, so it's like, okay, I can stay here then. I'll stay here. (laughs) You know, um, there are Fortune 500 companies that move their whole entire operation here because they, and they're, they deem it's more affordable or it's centrally located. Um, There's a lot of reasons why people, why people um, choose to stay here. But at the end of the day, you know, I can't knock or judge someone's call right. to move or their call for, an, for a journey or an experience. Whatever makes someone wake up one day and say, I need to leave or I know where I need to go, and they act on that, then that's, that's their life's yeah. call to purpose. They, that's them acting on their intuition, and there's no one out there who can attach their you know, hypothetical assumption on why they did what they did or if it was the right move or if staying here is better. You know what I mean? Like, um, at the end of the day, I choose to stay here until I choose to stay here and one day I might choose to go. And I don't know when or what might cause that, but, you know, we all have our call to, to move, if not temporarily, then, you know, then indefinitely. So... You know. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, you don't know what the future holds, so you better just appreciate what you have right now and, mm-hmm. and love it. But so to like, an- but to answer your question, I'm a fan of Chicago winter. Not when I'm always enduring it, but every time I look back, I'm glad to live a life to know what all four seasons on Earth feel like. Yeah, that's solid. So while we were talking about Chicago winter... And I agree with what you said. I'm also considering snowbird locations to like not leave the entire Chicago winter, but like take trips to somewhere warmer for a period of time during the Chicago winter, not the whole winter. Um, I'll just check it out. So I've been to Miami recently. Um, I usually take trips in like April, it feels like. It feels like the winter, Chicago winter, I think I am good with. It's the spring. The transition into spring, I think I have the most trouble with. Because it's like, 
it's like rainy or it's always gray and it just stays like 30 or 40 degrees for like two months it feels like (laughs) it's not the harsh cold i really it's not that it's so it's like i like to take trips in this time like march april uh so i'm looking into like the southwest and i think it'd be cool to take trips or find locations that you could take like every like annually Mm -hmm. um so I've checked out Miami. Miami's great. I wouldn't live there, but it's living. The idea of living in Miami is hard, but it's, oh, it's so much fun. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's so much fun. And there's definitely a relationship Love with Miami. Miami and Chicago too. Like I think El Capone used to go yeah. down there, and yeah. like, I mean, there's such a large Chicago population that like, yeah. you're gonna have Chicagoans everywhere. But um, yeah, Southwest, off the beat type of places, like not Phoenix, but like El Paso or like some middle of nowhere arizona i think i would like Mm -hmm. um do you have any like snowbird locations that you're thinking about no um when when you're rich and famous you can kind of in america is tough man because i think about less you know i think about the weather and i'm like man you know the idea of skipping a winter sounds phenomenal you know like the idea of just skipping one and just not being around or even not being around that much for it. it sounds great yeah but when i think about all the places in america all the states in america that have the best weather i don't want to go there with the exception of maybe like san diego or like um okay. i do like yeah. arizona i did a hot air balloon out there that was fun um hiking in vegas is fun um hanging out in miami is fun all yeah. those places are fun but the idea of being there for like a month I don't know, dude. No, not a month. Let's do like... A w- I feel like if it was out of the country, you could do like a month. I think that... But the concept of a snowbird is you have to leave for a while. I don't, I don't want to do that till I'm like 80. I feel that's, like. Just a, that's just a trip. That's like a visit. That's not a snowbird. I want to do a visit. A snowbird, snowbird leaves visits. for the winter. Yeah, when you think about nature, <laughs> birds <laughs> migrate for a season and then they come back, that's I suppose. Right. That's right. That's uh, right. You can't call it a snowbird and then be like, oh, I'm only going to go for a week. That's, no, <laughs> that's cheating, dude. You can't do that. It's like you got to leave. Oh, I don't want to do back. that. I just want to like take some, maybe like more frequent trips. Take multiple snowbird location that works. trips. That works. That's fine. Throughout the winter. That's fine. I don't know. What, what's your I, ide- like ideal travel? Because I love living here in Chicago, but I like taking trips too. I want a majority of my time to be spent in Chicago, though. I like... I like traveling not for work. <laughs> I don't want to travel for work because I feel like when you travel for work, there's a you have to bring your work persona with you. And, you know, sometimes you want to be yourself when you travel, and then there's, like, this duality conflict, at least with me. Um, you know, but if I had to pick a place... I would definitely want to hang out in maybe like uh, in maybe like Southern California, you know. Yeah. Um, I think that that's a peaceful, warm place to spend time with uh, a lot of stuff to do, and it, I find I find that to be better than like Alabama or Texas or Oklahoma or Florida. I don't want to stay in Miami that long. Um, snowbird is hard, man. Snowboard, snowboarding is hard. We probably should have like defined what snowbird is before we had this conversation. Nah, I, I didn't. <laughs> it's, an interesting, it's an interesting thing to think about, though. It's like, it makes you think, okay, if I'm not home, where is the second best place to be? I feel like, for me, I think it's more... I think I want to explore places during the winter. Cause I don't want to miss out on Chicago summer, really. So it's like, what's the most optimal time? I think it's actually like Chicago spring. That just like take trips. Like I, I went to uh, Spain in April 2017. I went to Southeast Asia in uh, April 2018. Uh, I went to Miami. Um, May, early May this, this year, 2021. Um, 
And I've really enjoyed those trips because it felt like it was something I needed to like reset myself. Not needed, but like it was great to do. That's, that's beautiful. Um, and it puts me in touch with like another part of the world. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, so it's like I would love to do that like every year. Sounds like, like just, you know. Yeah. But I'm curious like what other people because uh, I feel like I I love now something I loved last winter is I, I live in Uptown on the lake path or like right off the lake path in the lake and just like going out when it's like 20 degrees all bundled up like you like you're just like all geared up <laughs> and you go to the lake and in a city of like 3 million people I'm the only one there Mm -hmm. Or I'll walk on the lake path, and it is just me. Yep. And I, like, relish, like, in those moments of solitude. It's interesting in Chicago how you can have so many moments of solitude in a large city like this. And that's why I, I love about the winter, too, because it, 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 like, stimulates my mind in different ways. Because it's, it's forcing you. And, I mean, COVID did this with a lot of people. But, like, I love just, like, being inside and, like, having to, like, you can't go outside. There's not much to do outside. So you better figure out what to do inside. And, that, like, a lot of times it lends itself to creativity and just thinking and reflecting. You know, if it's, it's beautiful weather all the time, it's enticing to just literally just, like, Mm -hmm. be joyful all the time but I feel like it's good to not be joyful all the time I don't know yeah it, um, we all have our seasons too you know and yeah. um, our emotions kind of reflect those those inter that internal human season change so it's, it's healthy to constantly experience all your emotions on a rotation you know, just so you can become more equipped with juggling yourself. So I, you know, I think I think looking at it like that is pretty wise. At the same time, don't doubt people because people go out and they party and they have a good time all year round in polar vortexes. They still go out. I mean, they I still I, dress I, nice. I still they, do that, dude. You know, like. It doesn't, it, it quiets, the winter quiets the city, but it doesn't slow it down. Exactly. That's you know? a great point. That you is know? a great point. And, you know, this, this shit don't stop, dude. It don't stop. That's crazy. So I also work at a, a, a restaurant bartending there. When the weather gets cold, business goes up. Yeah. People pack inside. Yeah. And it's a lot of fun. Oh, it's so much fun. So much fun. Yeah. Oh, Chicago's so great. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what, uh... Have you discovered about yourself? Has anything changed about you from the last time we did the podcast? Oh my god. Things change, but has anything changed about me? Um, I feel expanded since we've last done this. I feel I've I've experienced a wide array of original perspectives. I've met a lot of people who see the world through a lot of unique lenses and I'm becoming more and more moldable to resonating with people's unique perspectives. Um, I feel a little bit more mature. I feel... Um, the adult side of my life starting to take over a little bit more <laughs> and just like the small things that I like yeah. um, stuff that I probably didn't care too much about a year ago two years ago um, but overall I don't necessarily feel like I've changed in the connotation of like a 180 in some point of my life or a 90 degree turn in some parts of my life but I definitely feel, I definitely feel 
if like if my life was a book from the last time you seen me the bookmark would be closer to the end like it would be further into the book you know and a lot has happened within those pages that I can't really summarize but but like I feel like from an outside view in the same uh, analogy of like this book or this story like my my character's development has become a lot more interesting and I feel like people are a lot more dialed into the story now you know interesting um, I, it, it's you know life is just evolving in, in an unpredictable way yeah I um, I feel like Wayne and I have like similar personalities or perspectives on life and I, I also kind of view my life in a book in a way and there there are like in my mind clear distinctions on like chapter beginnings and endings mm -hmm. and right when covid like started i knew okay that chapter now is done mm -hmm. we're entering a new chapter mm -hmm. and now it kind of feels like this first covid chapter is kind of ending a bit yeah and so much character wise has happened yeah yeah, it's, it's been, crazy. It's like a short amount of time when you think about the whole book. Yeah. But so much happens in this one particular chapter That's right. of this book. That's a great way to say it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's a great way to say it. I feel that way. Yeah. I really do. So then what What are like three musical artists that are in your heavy rotation right now? I feel like music is something so personal to people. You can really gauge a person by the music they listen to because it's such an intimate experience so what are three artists right now in your heavy rotation now you got me thinking if there's some sort of direct correlation between the expanse my character development has experience and the music that is in heavy rotation but i'm I mean, not gonna unpack that right now. <laughs> i feel like music the music you select to listen to Mm. you're saying to yourself I'm allowing this music to influence mm. me as a person Man. like that's how deep music is to our human experience I think so it's like I'm curious what other okay artists um, people are listening to now that I'm, I'm gonna get my I'm gonna get my weird answer out of the way I've begun listening to tons of like meditation and frequency sounds, sound music, okay. sound bowls, you know, like, you know, weird, weird, like meditation chants and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I spend a lot of my time listening to that because I feel like during this quarantine chapter, solitude is at an all time high and that's a place yeah. where I, I, I really do thrive, you know, um, but there is a um there's a weight that comes in the environment of thriving is that you know like like a plant will grow all of its leaves in the spring but then when the winter comes it can't sustain all of that growth and it has to shed yeah. you know and it has to shed leaves to a point where it can sustain growth and i felt like i went through like a painful shedding after all of that soaking in all that growth you know what i mean and those growing pains caused crazy mental soreness, crazy emotional soreness, you know, crazy spiritual soreness. And a lot of those meditation and frequency sounds um, specifically aimed towards like the pineal gland, I felt like helped me tap into a deeper part of myself that brought me a new level of peace that I've never experienced to this point in my life. So that's not necessarily a musical artist, but it's it's something music sound wise that I've picked up in the past, you know, Wait, year. What, are, what do you years. use? Spotify or Apple? I'm, I'm a big YouTube premium person. Oh, YouTube I'm, premium. Yeah, YouTube I premium. I YouTube premium I'm a people. big YouTube premium person. I do. Um, um, my lady has Spotify, so I don't necessarily need to pay for that. And then I'm, a, I'm huge on videos. I'm huge on videos. Um, and I can find a lot of music through YouTube, but, you know, with me growing up as a, or with me spending the, ha the past 50% of my life as a dancer, performer, and then me running an entertainment collective, I get so much music cycled yeah. through me all the time. I don't really find myself searching or 
digging yeah. for it anymore and I spend a lot of time on YouTube you know like music history almost or tutorial videos or uh, watching entertaining stuff so I'm big on YouTube premium um, nice um, sorry I'm, I'm, I'm digressing musical artists um, okay so we got that what are what are like two musical artists in particular um, I really like FKJ uh, okay. French Kiwi Juice I know it's a silly name at least in America we think that's a silly name but this dude is talented as fuck. He's like a one-man instrument army. Okay. And he he composes music on the spot, and you just dance to it. I seen him live. Most amazing dude. He's a killer. FK. He's he did that song to French Dow. Kiwi Juice. Juice. He did that song with um with Masego to Dow. Super popular. Um, okay. but FKJ. Is, uh, watch his uh, speaking of YouTube watch FKJ um, his circle of musical set C-E-R uh, I want to uh, C-E-R-C-L-E circle okay. watch you know FKJ musical set it's beautiful it takes place in Bolivia he's in the water oh, nice. the sun's setting he just <laughs> kills it he's a genius he's a musical genius um, and then the a third musical artist um, that I have been listening to a lot is actually a super old throwback. Okay. Is a um a, a, a vocalist. She did a lot of vocal songs and, and uh, a lot of vocal uh tracks in, in in the house music category. Her okay. name's Joy Caldwell. Okay. Any house song that has her vocal on it is gonna be a a banger. Joy Caldwell. J J O I. Joy, okay. yeah, she she, uh, she'll wake. She's like a she's like a gong to the soul when you hear. Her. <laughs> yeah, it's a great great analogy, <laughs> great metaphor. Um, but those those have been like to summarize my musical artists. I'd say. Okay, that was a long answer. I'm sorry. No, it's beautiful. So we're, we're wrapping up here. I have two questions left for you. Okay. What's something you're curious about recently? always curious I have like an insatiable appetite for knowledge um, something I'm curious about as of late I had a theory it's like one of those uh, my I call them high moments where you're just like I'm like smoking weed at home and I'm like high to my mind but my brain's like you know, racing into like imagination mode. <laughs> and I had this theory that stuck to me that I really wish I could explore. I want to talk to like a, uh, what's his name? Neil deGrasse Tyson or something. Okay. And like figure yeah. it out. So gravity holds us down here on earth physically, okay. right? Gravity at some point holds or resists everything from elevating to a certain degree, right? Right. My question that I'm curious about is if one leaves Earth and says go to the moon, gravity is lifted in a sense, and yeah. they have a way easier time like elevating. Their gravity is not holding them down. I wonder if gravity has an effect on our consciousness. If Ooh. gravity on Earth weighs down our ability for our consciousness to expand past a certain point. Wow. Now, there's obviously people who are academic geniuses, and they exercise that that brain muscle, and they can exceed. They can exceed through gravity's force in the same way a basketball player trains his body, and he can jump nine feet in the air. That a regular person who doesn't train that way can't fight through gravity yeah. on that vertical the same way someone who trains their body does. But these academic people, like Neil deGrasse Tyson, they train their mind and they think so much that they've expanded their ability to, un to comprehend things that normal people, our muscles aren't fine-tuned enough to comprehend that. But if someone like him spent a long time in an environment where there was no gravity, would he be able to comprehend more? Is gravity holding down our ability to elevate consciously? That's so something I've been curious about. 
Sounds like you and I, instead of traveling to <laughs> snowboard locations, need to go to outer space to test this for ourselves. I don't know. I would like to ask astronauts or people who spent a lot of time in space, you know, if they feel that way or if they feel as if it's harder for them to comprehend things down to their back to mm. see if we can compare that. You know, we should get someone from NASA to come on. I'll you know I'll find someone from NASA. If to someone come on. can tag Neil or one of those, you know, genius yeah. NASA people and get and, and, and forward that question, I would really love to explore that. I can spend days on a chalkboard exploring that. See, that is a great <laughs> answer to this question. I love it. This is the this is the bar of answers that I'm looking for. For what are you most curious about recently? That's great. So my last question for you is, what's something you're excited about for the next two years? Um, I learned a phrase, inshallah, God willing. You know, I want to make it two years before I can anticipate excitement. So I'm hoping to, I'm hoping to be here longer than two years. I don't want to be like cursed or anything, but um, I'm. I've been working really hard on Styling Out Network, and we have a lot of uh, like services. I don't want to call them services because that sounds like commercial and cheesy, but we have like a lot of new things that uh, we plan on launching yeah. uh, 2022. Um, we're definitely trying to uh, get people more involved in 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 the culture of hip hop and, and breaking break dance, um, and not just teach it but also pass on the culture and pass on opportunity for new kids and new crews and new people to like continue to grow Chicago's hip hop scene. Um, not just our DJs and our house scene, but Chicago and our hip hop scene because you know, they're both equally as powerful if not siblings of one another, you yeah. know? Um, so I'm, I'm really excited for that. Um, I'm really excited to be uh, participating in more competitive events 2022. Um, 2020 was scary. We didn't know what was going on with COVID. 2021, we still don't know, but I feel way more brave. I feel safe. Um, you know, I've, I've survived it twice, thank God. And, you know, my, my body held up tremendously. You know, I'm, I'm lucky and I'm, I'm, I'm blessed enough to have been able to hold up tremendously to that. So, you know, even with, you know, taking taking precautions and uh, uh, get, getting my vaccinated as I thought that was the safest choice for me um, and, and you know, doing everything I need to do. I, and in addition to taking my training and, my, and, and everything to another level through 2020, I feel healthier, safer, more protected now more than ever. So I'm ready to return to like the competitive events and traveling more and seeing all of all of my talented network from all over the country yeah. and world and I'm, I'm just really excited to to get back on it in the flesh not just yeah. from behind the screen you know yeah <laughs> yeah nice well wayne thanks for coming back on again dude this anytime is, this has been great this is always great i always appreciate this and every time i you. i'm with you uh it's just magical <laughs> <laughs> you set it up dude you're like a catalyst for magic <laughs> on that be a catalyst for magic in your own community yes yes i like that i like that <laughs>